here we are, the perfect patio. This is the exciting day. We're actually gonna lay some papers down onto our freshly screeded sand. So once the sand is ready to go, I'm gonna start to figure out some exact points in which to lay out the soldier's course. So I'm actually gonna pull some measurements off of the house. We could also just have our string line still set up as well, right? Nice and parallel. Um, but I like to make marks in the sand where I can to really get that first straight section going in the right direction, right off the bat. So now I'm just gonna lay out the pattern. So just figuring out which direction I want the herringbone to go. And the nice thing about this pattern is that a lot of it is just gonna be exactly half cuts of papers. Uh, except where we're gonna do sort of our river rock detail, it's gonna flow with some nice curvatures so that you can see how to do some different types of curves. So just a little sample section, this would be a great time to pull the client out, make sure that they're happy with it. And I'm using the ICPI recommended click and drop method for actually laying the papers onto the sand. And for this video, I really wanted to show you that you can reuse old papers and still do a really nice job. Um, they're not gonna be clean after they're pulled up, so I usually scrape all the joints and stuff first before I even pull them up, makes it nice and easy. You can pressure wash them before as well, um, but they're probably gonna need some tidying up when we actually pull them off the pallet again. So quick scrape, I like to stack them all up like that first, scrape a bunch together, and then we can bring them over and get them ready to lay. So I don't wanna stack them too close to the edge, but I want them within reach so that I can start to really efficiently kind of zipper my way back and forth along the pattern here. So stacking one, row in one direction and the next one back the other way. So nice to have pavers close by to do that. And I'm just gonna line up and use my straight edge here to adjust my soldier's course before I get too carried away. You can use a board as well for this. Um, as you probably know from some of my previous videos, I basically use this one level for everything. Um, and it's still, still kicking. I had a few questions about that. Uh, but yeah, it's still really true and, uh, and yeah, really nice straight edge as well. Uh, but for these longer lines, before we get too much of the patio actually laid, it's nice to take a second, step back, and make sure that those lines are still nice and straight. So I'm going to use a straight edge, you can pull a string line as well. I'm basically just using the same screed board, so nothing too crazy. And the square, to make sure I'm not getting any way off kilter square from the house. And I'm just going to do some fine tuning on some of these lines, making sure that I can do it now as opposed to once the patio is all in and it's hard to adjust anything. So you can see we're going to have to do some cuts around these concrete columns, but we're basically halfway there as far as actual laying. Um, I didn't quite go far enough with my screed on the one edge, just missed it by a couple inches. So I'm just going to fine tune it with a trowel making sure that it's going to be nice and level there still. We can double check with the level two. And starting to lay this pattern down. So it's getting there. If your pavers are pretty close by, and especially if you had some help to lay it, I'm doing this one all by myself, um, it can actually go quite quickly. So still working in the shade here, I think it took about three hours to get all this laid in. You can see that most of it, like I said, is just sort of half paver cuts. And then we can start to work on this nice sort of curved area as well. So for curvatures, you can set up like a really nice radius. You can even use like a piece of conduit or something like that. It's gonna keep a nice curvature for you. Um, I'm doing a pretty free formed curve here. I wanted to show you kind of not just one radius, but sort of a compound curve where it's gonna have a couple of um, a couple of sections of curve, like a little bit's gonna be tighter, a little bit's gonna be looser, it's gonna curve in and out just a touch. So I wanted to show you how to sort of accomplish all of that. And the reason why I wanted to do this sort of curvature on the edge here is that it's gonna work out nice for the river rock detail up against it. Um, the in curve is actually gonna just capture sort of the, the tree that's above it as well. So it kind of frames that a little bit. So starting from the soldier's course closest to the camera, I uh, basically just started laying out and using the gap on the outside edge as a reference to keep the curve nice and consistent. 
And then I got to the point where the curve was a little too tight. So now I'm gonna pull the pavers, space them out about a paver width apart at the, the wide end, at the section where it's tight here. And then I can stack pavers on top. And that'll give me a good idea of where the cuts need to go. Just making sure that I'm not past the width of the paver to make it really easy to mark and cut these in a second, which you'll see. So stacking them on top, any kind of fine tuning, little adjustments need to be made. The idea is that once the gaps get too big for the curve, we need to make some cuts. We don't want anything more than about half an inch of gap like those ones, right? So if the curve is too tight, those gaps are gonna be too big and sand's not gonna stay in there and that edge is gonna be quite weak. So that's why we need to add that section of cuts in there. So past that, the curve is a little bit less drastic, so I can start to line them up again. Working my way across, sometimes you have to sort of pull it up and tweak it. It's funny, on each curvature, like the start of the curve, if you tweak that just by the tiniest bit, it can actually translate out to a couple inches on the far side. So sometimes you have to double back and kind of tweak it to get it going in the right direction that you want. It. The nice thing about the sand is that you can draw out the curvature in the sand beforehand as well. So you have sort of a reference to work to. So working my way across, getting that inside outside curve happening, trying to match up to the soldier's course that I've laid up against my pattern, um, which is nice and straight up against it on the far side there. So now I'm actually gonna pull all of that nice and tight to that far soldier's course and work it all the way back to my cuts so that I don't have an awkward sliver cut at that end. It actually looks like it flows right through. And then I'm already making cuts on basically full pavers at that section where the curvature is really tight. So I might as well have all my cuts there and make it look like it was all meant to be. So just working it all back, keeping the pavers as tight as can be. And I can gauge the curvature based on the small gaps that are created on the outside edges back to the point where we're gonna have those cuts. So same thing, trying to make sure that there's no sliver cuts anywhere, right? So getting a nice, pretty close to full paver everywhere we go. And I'm just gonna fill in my pattern so I know which cuts I need to make up against it after. And there's just a close look at the sort of smooth curve that we've created that we're gonna cut in short. Side outside, then the tight radius, and it flows back into that point there in the corner. Okay, let's look at some actual marking and cutting now. So each company is going to do this a little bit different. I find it nice to use either a marker or a pen, something that's not going to actually wash off right away or get blown off when we're cutting, and just set the papers up in like with our pattern on the soldier's course, and I'm looking directly down and just making a couple points on each end. And then I can line those points up when I'm cutting, either using a small grinder set up for wet cutting, so definitely don't use just a regular grinder, or a small cutoff saw, which actually buzzes through these pavers really nicely, super easy to use. And I really like the cutoff saw, the small battery operated ones so that you can get into some of these tight curvatures. So this is an example of cutting around a cap or a downspout. So marking out the cuts so that the pavers are nice and full, like large, large pavers. So you're just cutting the very edge, doing some kind of relief cuts in there, right back to that mark, using it at a couple angles, chipping it out, and then finishing it off after. Or we can use the bigger sort of more pro setup with the IQ uh, this is IQ MS362 and getting that dustless action in there to cut through nice and easy and keep the job site really clean. So no, no matter what method you use, basically we just have to get the pavers cut, right? So it has to be cut, it has to be cut really accurately so that we can get our marks cut. And usually I like to mark it so that I'm actually taking the mark. So that means like cutting through the mark that I made, not on either side of it, but actually cutting directly through it. And whatever you do, just make sure it's consistent so that if the cuts work, you're keeping it the same so that you and if you're working with someone 
um, both know that you're actually taking the mark or going on a specific side of the mark, whatever it takes so that you can actually get them cut and then they fit right away so you're not having to cut them twice. So for that tight radius section, we can actually just run the mark along the papers on top, translate that down to the bottom ones, and I'm just gonna number them so that I know which one goes where in sequence, just to make it easy, because these can, I, I find they can move around quite a bit once you cut them. So it takes some fine tuning to get them exactly where they need to be for the actual curvature after. So line them back up in that pattern, and then usually it takes a bit of tweaking to get it tight back to the point where it was that the gaps are all nice and consistent. Uh, if you're cutting two edges off of a paper, I actually find it's best not to have it like butt up right tight to the papers beside it. That's why they have those little tabs on the edges of the papers, so that you can get some sand in there. And that's actually gonna help lock them together. So there's our curvature and papers all cut in, getting close. Curvature is nice and smooth, and we can cut up to it. So once we cut up to it everywhere, we're gonna curb it so it's nice and solid and ready to compact after. And I just wanna show you how I went about cutting the soldier's course into this concrete column section. So usually a little bit awkward to do, but just wanna line it up so that there's the biggest size of paper as possible. And I'm literally just using my marker here as a reference tool for gauging the widths. So you can see at first I just sort of held the marker up to get that length from the paver there on the right up against the concrete, translated that mark on the paver, and same thing on the edge. So you can use a tape measure as well, obviously, um, but I find it nice and quick just to use the marker as a reference. And I hold it, I hold the measurement that I need with my finger and translate that over, just like that. And from there I can sort of trace that outline of the curve is looking straight down, like from the camera view. I'm just mimicking and eyeballing that curvature. And at this point, we want to get it close. I'm not going to cut all the way to the line right away. I'm going to take it just before that, trim it down, make sure it's nice and close, and then I'm going to cut it one more time for sure, just to get it really tight. But that way I can put the paper up against it and really see and get it more precise exactly where I need it. And slide it home. So then we can work on the next one, basically just do the exact same thing. Line up a paver, take our quick measurement using whatever reference tool we have. So that's actually a little bit tight there. And trim it back down. And slide it in so it matches up with our pattern. So yeah, really nice to add that detail. These are things that are gonna look really sharp once the patio is actually done, if we make the extra time to get those cuts really precise. And like I mentioned in a previous video here in the start of the series, my drainage is right on the edge of the patio. So I'm gonna curb, making sure that I'm still curbing on the road base layer, but I'm right beside the clear crush and perforated pipe system there. So that water is gonna roll right off of it, onto the curb, down into the drainage, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna do some fine tuning, sort of tweaking with a little uh, screwdriver or flat tool before I sand anything, so that the sand is actually gonna lock in our pattern pretty nicely. So I wanna make sure we do that before we put the sand in, otherwise it's not gonna move at all. And we're gonna sand it all in, making sure that it gets topped up as much as possible. The compaction is actually gonna send the sand deep into the joints as well. That's gonna create that lockup effect that we really need. And I'm just gonna to touch up the edges with a hand tamper first. I find this really helps stopping the compactor from actually pushing our pattern out. So it kind of locks in the edge first. Then we can run our compactor. We usually like to go starting with the longest, straightest line. So keeping that locked in first. And we have to be nice and careful when we turn it. So lifting up on the outside edge. And then we're going to double back the other direction. At this point, you can sweep in sand in between passes. So do it all in one direction, sweep in sand, do it all in another direction, sweep in more sand. Getting that sand consolidated down into the joints is key. And I like to go in a third direction if possible on the herringbone pattern, just to make sure that it's all nice and smooth and that we've hit everything really nicely. I'm gonna be a little bit extra um, and do some 
fine tuning by hand to get the sand exactly to the right height that I want. Um, but you can do that just with a stand up softer bristle broom as well. And I'm just gonna wet it down. Just do some final cleaning, making sure I can see if there's any spots where the sand actually gets flushed down into the joint or it didn't get topped up enough. That looks pretty good. And just let it dry. Take a look, if there's any little minor discrepancies, now's the time to fix them before we show our client or we actually get to move our furniture, if this is our home patio, onto it and get it ready to use. So after that, I'm actually gonna work on some river rock and some final details, which I'll show you in the final video of the Perfect Patio series. See you then.